All right, everybody, welcome to the Obscure Toy Files. I am your host, Chris, a.k.a. Boggs, and we're back with the Kenner Robocop and the Elder Police Robo Command vehicle with a Robocop figure from 1989, I, I think. 1989. Yeah, so this came out in 1989. I mentioned the other day in my other Robocop uh, video that I was waiting for it to arrive in the mail, and it did, so I'm very excited to get it. Um... It's not very big in terms of, like, what you would think it to be. Like, you're looking at a box, and you assume it to be a certain size, really. Um, like, when you see pictures of it online, you don't really know exactly how big it is. Like, uh, here, here's a jar of Jif peanut butter. It's 28 ounces, so it's one of those jars. So it's not really, it's not like it's huge. But it wasn't supposed to be a large vehicle. It's like a, a small one-man vehicle. Uh, let's see, we'll look at some of the stuff on the box. Command Pod is Robocop's assault vehicle and emergency energy recharge system. Contents one vehicle and one action figure, some assembly required, no tools necessary. And it's got, it's got pretty cool uh, art in the front. Let's turn the flash. Looks like Robocop kind of chills out in there. It's got some like double laser guns on the top. And then those four different things, like this one and that one. And that one and that one. Those are actually interchangeable arms. So you can pop out his arms and swap in these new ones, which I think is pretty cool. That was one of the things I used to always look at in the Kenner Action guidebooks that would come with figures. I was always like, what? I'm like, that's pretty freaking neat. And they just four and up. Caution, not recommended for children who stupid objects in their mouths contain small parts. Good job on Kenner for looking out for the little kids. Um, let's see. On the top, it says, replace RoboCop arms with the pod weapons to increase his assault power. And then you can recharge RoboCop energy system while on assault. And you can see how, like, it plugs into his back and then also plugs into, I think, the, where his arm was, I believe. Because if you look in here, you can see how his arms attach there when he swaps them out. So that's what it says. That's what's on the top of the box. The front. Uh... The side, it's just another picture of the Royal Command doing its thing. Uh, the other side, same thing. And then we'll go on the bottom and look. And the bottom is a little different. Um, and, and this picture is different. It says, Command Pod can act as backup for RoboCop solo missions. So what that leads me to think is that this vehicle kind of can function as like an independent robotic thing, similar to like Ed 209, or in this line it was Ed 260. So basically you can have Robocop walking around doing its thing, and then the Robo Command will follow him and act as like his partner, which is pretty cool. Because So not only does this vehicle house Robocop, protect Robocop, give him additional arms, and allow him to charge during, you know, when he needs to be, re, you know, recharged. It also works as like a, like a backup buddy. So that's pretty neat. So that's it. I always like the lore and the, like the what the reason for behind things was. Um, in 1989, uh, now one of the things I wanted to notice is the tape is still sealed on there. Like, it, but what happens is that sometimes the tape will slip over over the over time. Like you can see how it gets a little gooey, and then like it, cause you can like here I can like it's tacky because the, the tape. Like, the glue loses its, its uh, effectiveness and it starts to drag. This happens over time. Okay. <clears throat> the real meat. Nothing can stop Robocop and the Ultra Police. Robo Command with Robocop action figure. Robo Command is the Robocop super all-terrain attack vehicle indispensable for law enforcement action. The techno technically advanced... Robo Command gives Robocop increased mobility and firepower, and the energy recharge function revitalizes Robocop while he's out on patrol. Arch enemy Ed 260 has met its match. I don't know why it was called Ed 260 in the toy line. The, the, the movie was Ed 209. I don't, know, I don't know why they changed it. Um, guns and laser cannons can replace Robocop arms for a full force independent assault. And then it lists all the different things. So you got Gatling guns here. Robocop. It doesn't say what the other guns do, but that one's a Gatling gun. I mean, they're all Gatling guns, I don't know. Digital display and control panels, laser cannons here, and energy field recharge tubes, which are the things we saw up there. 
all-terrain treads. Now, I don't think these treads actually have wheels. So it's all like they're all-terrain in your imagination. So what we're going to do is we're going to open him up on camera so we can all experience the coolness of opening up a vintage Kenner toy ourselves. So you can get the experience as if it was 1989, busting this puppy out. This side tape seems secure. Tape's good there. So this thing was not open before. Like it looked, I thought it might have been here, but it's just stretched. But yeah, no, it's all the same thing. I don't think it was open twice. Turn it thing. But we'll cut on this one because it looks like it's more open. <laughs> and now the value of the set has just dropped by thirty dollars. <laughs> for those of you who care about money, but we're doing this for fun. What's that's the whole point of collecting toys? You open it up, and there's the vac metalized robo armor that's bulletproof, which will go right here. I didn't know this piece came off separate. That's kind of neat. Get it with. Ah, you can smell the vintageness. And then we can peek inside, and we can see there's Robocop hanging out. Dun, 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 dun. Like, yeah, like I said about the, the tape going, you can see right here. I'm sorry. You see how the tape's just kind of like getting yellowed? And it just happens because over time, in 89, you're looking like 30-something years ago. The tape just starts to, like, it's all sticky here. Because the tape just rots away. So, what's interesting about this Robocop... I don't know if this is the same one as the Gatling uh, Robocop they sold single carded, but this Robocop has removable arms, obviously, and he also is unique in that he doesn't have that the uh, cap thing on the back, because all the other Robocop figures, um, from like the Robocop one, the first figure, the Night Glow one, all have like a big plug on the back. Where you, it's like a door, you open it up, and you put the caps in, and you push the button, and it goes, tuk, 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 and it snaps and everything. So this is a unique Robocop in that he doesn't have that. I don't know if he has a gun, though. Does he have a spot even on his leg for him to put his gun? I'm sorry. It's like, make horrible shots, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't see any spot to put a gun. So I guess he's, this, this Robocop is basically a Robocommand. Like, what do, I need to, what do I need to hold a gun for? I can replace my arms with guns. I'm amazing. What's cool also is you really can't tell that like he's blue there. It's really, you really see it more on the actual toy, but the prototype. Now, this is a fun fact. Nine times out of ten, the, the item you see on here, this is a prototype. So what happens is, when the when Kenner is producing this, they'll take photographs of the toy for the catalogs they used to give out at Toy Fair trade shows years ago. So those same pictures go on the boxes. So they'll take pictures of the prototype, which usually is like a resin prototype or a duplicate they have. Some, it's rarely a production sample. It's usually something that was made just for uh, photography purposes or just to test things out. Like, it's not a finalized toy, which is why a lot of times, like, they'll say, like, uh, colors may vary and stuff like that. So this is, like, the actual toy, and that's the prototype. So, like, that's the original, original one that they used to show what this would look like. So that's kind of neat. That, and that's on old toys. Like, you look at any old toys from back then, like, you can, and if you have a good eye... You can check, and you can, like, look at it, and you can see how the paint on this is more of, like, a matte finish and not, like, actual plastic. Whereas, like, he's actually molded in this color plastic, and he's just painted. Like, this thing's he's just painted, but he's molded in that color. Because the general idea from Toy Companies was to mold the figure in the color plastic so you don't have to do as many paint applications because paint applications cost more money, and that means more time, and it means they have to increase the price of the item. So they don't like having to do that. All right. What else we got here? Let's see. Looks like we got. I have in part. I apologize for having more easily accessible stuff. Usually, I have my apparatus and whatnot. But I don't have any of that with me. Okay, so this appears to be the actual Rebel Command vehicle itself. So this looks like it's the base of it. It has some some glue residue from the tape that came loose. So I'll have to scrub that up a little bit. Oh yeah, that looks, that looks like the base. Yeah, it looks like that part there. The Robocop will probably sit there. And then we got, oh, oh, oh. Cool stuff. 
Nice, nice, nice. Let's put this over here. Get this out of the way. Now, like I said before, uh, Kenner Action Toy Guides were a staple of all Kenner box toys. Like if you bought a toy, uh, why is the sticker keep just buried in there? Yeah. Now you don't want to come out? Okay. Please. Yeah, so it comes with a sticker sheet. 87. Wait a minute. It's 89 now. So every every uh, Kenner toy, every boxed Kenner toy comes with one of the famous Kenner Action Toy Guides. And this one's from uh, 89, and it features Building Blasters, Mega Force, Robocop and the Ultra Police. Turn the flash off for the glare. Real Ghostbusters, Blast Jets, Police Academy, and Starting Lineup. Now these, like I said, these are the things that made me get interested in this Robocop line to begin with. I, mean, I knew about it as a kid, but... And like I said, going, looking through these over the years, like I used to put them in Ziploc bags and bring them with me on class trips along with my Motu Master Universe mini comics. Just checking out all the stuff. It was always so cool. Like I never got these. I always thought they were neat, though. Um, my cousin had that. Yeah, so this isn't the last catalog for Ghostbusters. They had more stuff to come out. This was like almost towards the end. And it's funny because <clears throat> even this, I don't know if they show more guys. No, but it's it. So this is like the wave right before this. Because the original assortment, like I mentioned in the last video, was just him, it was Robocop, and these three guys. And then they added Ann Lewis and Sergeant Reed. And then there was just Headhunter and Nitro. And they added Chainsaw and Dr. McNamara. So they added stuff. They kept increasing the line. Yes, yeah, that's like something they did too. Available for that in 1989. That'd be on these things a lot too. So like, this stuff was still coming. This was when Robocop and the Ultra Police was doing okay at retail and people were picking it up and giving new items out. So they had things like, yeah, hey, see this Robo Jailer? It's coming out in 1989 in the fall. Keep, keep your eyes out. Same with the Robocop law enforcement kit. I actually just got this. I got the Skull Hog on eBay. That's on the way too. So we're going to have a couple of Robocop vehicles. <clears throat> now this line... I'm just going to go through this quick so I don't stop the thing. I never remember building blasters. Like, I've never seen them in these books, but I never actually had any. And Mega Force, I actually just I have a bunch of these. I'm going to be looking at those soon. I got, uh, I got this rocket launcher set, that rocket launcher set, these VTOL sets. Um, I got the Brimstone. Tower Tracks, Strike Master, Scorpion. Yeah, I got those will go up here too. We'll check those out. I think, I think the rest of this is like these are pretty cool. I'm sorry, everybody. Let's kind of flip them through. Oh, and then, then, then starting lineup. We don't care about them. They flip the rest of the book. Oh, then Police Academy. Oh, fun fact this uh, Blast Jets thing here, uh, kind of used that for a Batman Dark Knight collection toy. They just did that for everything. They loved using stuff over and over again. All right, back to the Robocop review. A brief message from our sponsor, Kenner. And here's the instructions for the RoboCommand police vehicle. Oh, command. Let's see. I get to open it, which apparently is not easy to do. Oh, for the love of Pete. Okay, here we go. Whoa, there are a lot of instructions. Holy crow. <coughs> Control panel detail. Slide. Da, 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 da. Assemble robot armor by inserting front pin, pin front pin first and then rotating down and snapping. Happens to the slot. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any wheels. That, 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 that's kind of a bummer. I would have uh, definitely, uh, I would have definitely uh, put wheels on the bottom of it. So I think it's kind of like a, a miss on uh, Kenner's part was not doing that. Let's get the rest of the Robo Command out. Everything should be in here. Ho oh, oh, ho! There we go. And here are the arms. Actually, this kind of opens like this. Is it open? Yeah. 
get up close and personal with everything. Yeah, it's hard to do this with one hand. Usually I have a, I have a stand that has a gripping thing on it. <clears throat> Let's put this over there. And then here we got the Robo Command set in all of its misassembled pieces. This is so cool to actually have this thing in front of me because, like I said, I've been seeing it in those little books for, for decades. So to actually have it in person is just bananas. It's so cool to actually have it so I can look at it right now and check it out. All right, so we're going to see if we can put... I'm going to probably pause it to put the labels on, because that's that I can't do with one hand. But I'm going I'm to see if I can put this thing together. <clears throat> here, here at the Obscure Toy Files, we like to make sure we give you the full full experience of putting the toy together. Because that was part of the fun back then, too, was putting this stuff together. Okay, so we get step one, assemble vehicle... Starting with the treads and working your way up to the laser gun attack, so the laser gun attack light panel, which is laser gun attack light panel. So basically, it's like and this kind of sandwiches all in together. So the treads peg into the base, the base pegs into the part where Robocop can plug his arms into, and then the canopy attaches to that, and that. And that. Okay. Now this was actually good because. Sometimes uh, vac metal stuff will chip or it will bleed. So putting it in its own little sealed baggie was a good idea on Kenner's part. So you don't have to worry about it getting all messed up. Oh, of course, this tape. Why is there always tape? Let's see if I can cut this. Pardon me for one second. Zoom back. Yeah, I don't have the best equipment for doing this. But I try to make sure that I can do a halfway decent job. Okay, that was enough. Good. <laughs> Fortunately, 30 something year old tape <clears throat> is not very durable, which is good for us. Yeah, this thing's so small. Nice. Yeah, that would have been really cool if they had put uh, wheels on the bottom. I'm surprised they didn't. It's, you know, you usually have to give it when it comes to treaded vehicles. I mean, the, the sculpting detail on it is really nice. They did a very good job on it. Like, it looks like it could move. We got our treads. We got our base section. Okay. Now, now this is a good thing. I like how they did this. To help you guys, you guys and the kids at home, not get goofed up. These, see so a big peg, little peg? Big hole, little hole. So perfect. If we don't mess this up. Well, like I said, you, you, now that's the other thing. You, you could always goof it up and put the insides the wrong way. These are known as um, one-time assembly pins. They're meant, they're meant to lock in place so they don't come loose. So... Once these snap in, like those pe those pegs will go up uh, over that little bump, that ridge, and then it won't come out again. It, it's in there forever. Like, you'll have to, like, pry these back. But this is, <clears throat> to use more toy industry jargon, this is ABS plastic, because it's hard, like. And then this is PVC plastic, which is, has a little bit more pliability to it. Like, it, can move, it, has, it has some flex. ABS has no flex. If you try to flex it, it'll break. So we're going to see if we can do this one-handed, because we're trying to be that the guy today. Okay, we're in. See how it goes in? And then now it's there, and it's not coming off. Okay, so we'll do that for the other side. Got it there. Locked in. Okay. Yeah, I saw another guy did a review of this on YouTube, and he kind of seemed just, like, rather blasé about it. I'm like, putting together a vintage toy, dude, you should have a little fun. Some people just do things differently. You know, this too, these two have one-time assembly clips. It's like I said, it's because once it clips on, it won't come off again. Fortunately, it's pretty easy to see where it's supposed to go. It's not really like a mystery. It just goes on either side of this. Kenna did a very good job of lining up 
all the parts so that you can easily put it together. We're not having to worry about goofing anything up. But before I click that in, let's make sure. I just had a thought. I don't know how these hoses attach. Like these hoses might attach underneath it. And then I would be screwed. Then I wouldn't be able to get the thing on. And that would suck. So for a second I was like, wait, where are the hoses? And I go, oh, they must be in here with the arms. And let's take a look. Oh, okay. All right, this is good. All right, so these just peg in. They just peg in. See, I was thinking that these had to like maybe go in underneath. But they don't, so it's fine. So we're okay. So those little tubes over there can just chill out. And we can go back to putting on the control panel for the Rubo command. I apologize if I don't talk very loud. My wife and my son are asleep in the other room and sometimes it's hard to be very uh, loud and excited when I'm doing these things because I can not wake them up. Okay. I believe <laughs> the light is green, the trap is clean, as they say. Right, so that's all locked in. Cool. Okay, next is the canopy. So I think we're supposed to put that. Yeah, slide pointed section of control panel into position of the tabs that rotate back down and snap into position. Yeah, we got it in right. Everything's fit in flush. Oops, I just zoomed on my hand, sorry. Everything is zoomed in flush. So we're good to go there. So that's all good. Robo armor detail. Uh, some robo armor by inserting front pin first and rotating down and snapping slide pins into slots. Okay. We gotta open this too. Oh my god, this tape. It's everywhere. It's a bane of my existence. And it sucks because it's old tape. Old tape is not fun. But old tape is not much of a match for a razor blade. Even if I gently, gently grazed it. I'll float the peak on. Okay, I decided to pause it for a minute because I wanted to get the dang thing out. Okay, now it goes with this rounder part towards the front. So they tell us here assemble rubber armor by inserting front pin first and then snapping side pins into slots. So this goes right in there. So you got your pin here and it has a bit of a like a plus side look to it. So it has a bit of a ridge. This just goes in here like this. Rests there nicely. And then just one, two, boom. And you're done. And it's it. And like I said, this is a one-time assembly. Actually, no, that one's not too bad. This might be, this, you could probably pop that out again if you needed to. Okay, so that's done. Um, now we attach this to here. Which might be hard to do with one hand. But we're going to give it the old college try. Got one peg in. That's two. We're in. Herbal commands closes. And we're good. We're shut up. And ready to roll. And we're going to get our laser gun light panel. Which has these three sockets on it. With the three pegs. Peg that on there. And there we have it. The Robo Command vehicle, for the most part, is assembled. Except for. <laughs> okay, it really opens all the way. And these just peg in here. They look to be the same. So they go either just peg it in, boop like that. And boop like that and close that up and we're good to go there robo command ready to go oh wait you need to get robocop back in what are we doing oh so much tape oh, it's old tape old tape sucks Old tape is the stickiest 
and you see it going yellow and you're like, Ugh. Also depends on where it was stored. The box actually seems very, in very good condition. I wonder if this came from like a, a sealed case of uh, Robocop figures and stuff. Sorry if I'm flipping the camera around. Does it, I have to use two hands. It's just irritating. Okay. We have Robocop. <laughs> a slightly crooked helmet. I'm having trouble. Interesting. Here's where I'm going to go up. No points of articulation. Cool. We have our Robocop. I think it's Terminator music, actually. Okay, so we're going to pause. And we're going to get this decal shit. Decal shit. And get this decal sticker applied. So we'll be back in two seconds. So we'll just set ourselves up like this. All right, and we're back. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't know what those pipes noises were. I had to just pause it for a second. <clears throat> all right, so we're done, and the Robo Command is all decked out with its stickers. Now, the sticker sheet applied rather well. Um, they weren't all dried out or anything. They adhered nicely, so that was a, that's a bonus. Sometimes you never know, because <clears throat> for years I used to think that if a vehicle or toy was new in the box and never touched, that meant it was perfect, and it would come out of there you know, with no flaws at all. The real truth of the matter is, <clears throat> it all depends on where this is stored. And this was kept in somebody's attic through hot summers and cold winters for decades. Then it could be all destroyed. Like, not destroyed, but the sticker could, sticker goo could dry out. Because remember, this sheet is just sitting in the box. It's not in a Ziploc bag or anything, protected from the elements. just hanging out in a box with tape on it. It's not airtight. So the stickers is applied fine. You put some on the top here for, like, the, you know, the light bar. Like you would on any police vehicle. And then you have... Matching ones on the side where it says Ultra Police. Police, which I think is funny that it, I'm like, we know this is the police. It says Ultra Police there. And then you get a little light there. A little light bar in the front. And then when you open it, don't try to do it destroying anything. Then you have like a little technical readout in there. I, I, I did them upside down on each side so they look a little different. And then you also have a little energy gauge here, which is not a sticker you put on. What is his size to zoom in? That shows, I guess, like his energy levels. If you wanted to zoom in, which apparently it does not. There we go. That was how you're doing it. Yeah, so it looks pretty cool. Um, we're going to put Robocop in it first just to see what it's like with him sitting inside it. Uh, put his arms up here. He fits in there pretty good. No problems. But I think Robocop needs to be recharged, so we will. Plug it into his recharging port in his back and see if that affects anything. Yeah, he's like, what? <laughs> Those cables are very tight. So then we can just... <laughs> this is funny because he's like, it's like he's going on a moonwalk. Yeah, those cables are very, very, like, they're very stiff. They're not very flexible. They're more flexible than the other stuff, but they're not, like, super unflexible. Okay, all right, so those cables don't uh, adhere very, very well. Are they supposed to come out the back? Maybe? Oh, it doesn't really tell you a lot about that in the instructions. Jeez, I was stuck. Sorry, guys. Okay, we'll just for a go plugging that in. Let's see if we can close this up. With him inside, I'll go from there. Right, now that works much better. So I guess you have to just you have to just bend them around a little bit, put them in some boiling water, get them a little soft. But now Robocop is in the Robo Command. So I'll move this box out of the way. So you don't gotta worry about seeing that. And yeah, he's in the Robo Command, ready to come with me or there might be trouble. Your move, creep. <laughs> town this has been. So these pieces are removable, as we saw before. And you peg them in. Damn, they peg them tight, too. Holy fuck. Okay. And each of them are cool looking. 
Um, this is some sort of cannon. They don't tell you what they are in the instructions or anything. It's, it's just like, these are Gatling cannons. Like, that one looks like a radar dish. You shut your mouth, they're Gatling cannons. Okay, sure, sorry. I don't want to yell at you, sir. I think clips in pretty tight. Got some cool ones, though. They're pretty neat. Um, I said you don't have to take them all off. You can keep a couple on. And you can put them wherever you want. I just put them on as what's in the box. Um, we're going to remove Robocop's arms, which pull out easily. You don't have to really tug them. As you saw, we do it with one hand. We'll put his arm there. I do, I do think it's funny. Um, it's like, Robocop, how did you take off your arms? I can understand taking off one, but how did you take off two? Um, uh, don't, don't ask questions. What's that like? Alex Murphy? I had a bad day. I got the Terminator music. I keep doing that. Oh, what have I done? Do, 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 do. We're experiencing a wardrobe malfunction on Robocop. It looks like he's got a frowny face. I'm upset. Me. Would you be less upset with giant Gatling gun arms? Well, maybe. Click. It's a nice little click. And these are soft. Like, they're like a pliable rubber, which is good, which means they won't snap off in these. So you're less likely to tear these off when you're pulling them out of there, which is a good idea and well, well thought out on Kenner's part. Because yeah, now you get crazy Gatling gun arm. Robocop. <laughs> Which is good because the demo demolishers team for the Vandals are like toxic waste people and flamethrowers. So I guess he's like, all right, that's it. I'm bringing in the big guns. Literally. Dead or alive, you're coming with me. I'm having trouble. <laughs> Watch out the crazy vibrations don't fall off the arms. Okay. So that's, this is already a 32 minute video. I'm sorry for everybody for taking so long. I wanted to be thorough. I apologize for taking like a thousand years to do this. I pick these into his arms. Let's see. Little cops like, I need to be recharged. I'm having a rough day. <laughs> Little cop, what happened to you? Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't want to know. Where do you see the other guy? Uh, that doesn't work too bad, so you can do that too. That's another option. Okay, and we'll put these arms back on. And they just peg it on the top like this. You just, in this little click, and they're on there. I mean, there is some recoil when you turn them. Like this, and turn smooth. So, oh, I didn't put it on all the way. All right, there we go. Yeah, that does better. Okay, good. It's okay. So this is the Kenner 1989... Robocop and the Ultra Police Robo Command set. And I highly recommend picking it up. It's a fun way to have a different Robocop. You get a little vehicle that can become a attack partner. So that even if you just start off, like if you're getting the line, you have some vandals, and you only get this you only get one Robocop, get this one. Because he gets the extra arms, he gets the cool vehicle, it's just for him. And then he can roll into battle and ready to just F up people. Because like I said, you pop him out of there, and then the Robo Command is like his backup. So yeah, I think it's a great little vehicle. Um, I paid, um, I got this on eBay. I, I made an offer to sell her $75 for it. They wanted 100 I think, for it, and they took the offer. So I saved like 25 bucks. It depends on who you get it from on eBay. Sometimes they're more expensive. Just, just use your own judgment. If you find it at a show somewhere and pay like 50 bucks for it, I think 50 is a great price for it. 75 was a little high. But it was new in the box, sealed, everything was fine. I would, I would always, I always aim to get things new, um, because so you know they're in the best shape possible. And it's also fun to open them up and take them out of the boxes and stuff like that, like you saw us do here today. Okay, this is, so this, since this took so long, I'm going to do, I'm, on the next video, I'm going to open up all those carded RoboCop guys I showed you, and then we'll compare them with the RoboCommand, and the RoboCommand RoboCop. <clears throat> this is Chris Boggs from the Obscure Toy Files signing off. And remember, 
Nothing can stop Robocop and the Ultra Police. See you guys later.